Ferguson Barrett. How you doing this morning? All right. We're going up the mountain to the shop. We're going to make that uh, inset, that recessed bookshelf. So there's the shop. There's my partner's house that we built how many years ago? 15. I guess you designed it, huh, Dad? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, just like every customer, they have their own little idea of what they want. But but uh, here's the shop. So we're going to go in here and build this uh, bookcase, inset cabinet, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so here's our messy shop. <laughs> There's our joiner, a router table, our grinders, sanders, band saw, scroll saw, another shaper right there, big industrial shaper, our desk collection. We built all the cabinets in here for the shop. Big work table. It's our big Powermatic table saw, which is the foundation of any shop. Just a miter box there. Here's our big lathe. I think we can do up to 60 inches on that baby. What else have we got? And here's. Jonathan, since he's an automotive guy, he had to have a lift in here to take it up room in the shop. Just kidding, there's a radial, radial arm saw, our sander, and again, it's messy, but we actually use our shop. <laughs> if you go into a shop and it's uh, all pretty, most likely it's not being used that much. So our cabinet dimensions are 16 inches deep, uh, 46 inches long and 24 inches tall. So to make it quick and easy, I bought a 24 by 48 piece of cabinet grade plywood. And these three pre-cut shelves here. Now I could have just bought large sheets of cabinet grade plywood, but I'm gonna save a lot of time not having to rip down and all that. So, and this project is getting painted, so. We'll cut these pieces and I'll show you how we're going to put them together. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, so I've got my panel cutter here and it helps us to cut large pieces like this and keep them square. But I do have a reference line here. Now my partner has his uh, dado blade set up for another project and I don't want to mess that up. So I had to take this guard out raise the blade up so it may look a little funky but it'll work I just don't want to mess up his uh, once you get those dados uh, the thickness set up you don't want to screw them up for somebody so until they're finished with their project so I'm just going to cut it the way it is
Okay, so now the table saw is a nice big flat surface to assemble this on. And since there's no glue involved, I don't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to lower the blade, pop that puppy back in there. Now we can assemble our cabinet right here. Okay, let's talk about attachment methods. Uh, you know, we're artisans, right, Barry? We could spend a lot of time. We have a dovetail jig over there and all that. And if this was a piece of furniture like this, we might uh, consider doing some dovetailing or mortise and tenon or whatever. But this is going to be your recessed cabinet. And so you have to match your attachment method for the the use of your you know, your project. So this is a quick and easy way to attach these. It's actually very strong. So this is the Craig pocket tool jig. And uh, this is like the shop version, the professional version. You can buy these. I picked one of these up just for the on the go. It just has one, what we call barrel. And you can lay this. I should have just taken it out of the package because I need this drill bit. <laughs> but um, you can take this out and just lay it on your work on the site if you just have a quick you know attachment you need to make on the job but for the shop this works better because you can clamp it down and uh, let me just show you how this works okay you can see here hopefully you can see that depending on the depth I mean the thickness of your material you would set this collar back a certain distance that presets the depth of your hole so our material is actually five eighths of an inch thick, so it's between this half inch and three quarters. So that says three quarter, three and a quarter, and three and nine sixteenths. I may just set it at like three and three eighths, and see what that does. Let's see, Barrett. Maybe I should lay this out. Make it two inches. make this two inches on either side just so it's it's not really going to be seen but and I'll use the middle hole can't get that to sit down flat for some reason <laughs> okay so now what you do it's just take your drill bit here and run it down so it hits that stop and you'll have a hole ready for the screw so let me do these other two and I'll show you how we fasten it together Okay, so Barrett's going to try, but let me show you something, Barrett. Okay. Don't turn the drill on until you get this kind of started. See how that, and you're feeling the angle? Because you don't, I don't want you to grind out the barrel, mm -hmm. okay? So just get it started and then just turn the drill on, okay? Did you go all the way down? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. No, 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 no. No, just one time. <laughs> now let's move it over and let you do the other one. One thing neat about this system is that, you know, it's a handyman type thing too, so it's good for pros and handymen. Don't don't stick it all the way down in there. You don't want it to be touching the wood. Okay. There you go. Good job. You're a pro. <laughs> okay, these are... Uh, they stop making noise. Okay, this system comes with its own screws and they're inch and a quarter and they have this nice 
built-in washer on the head which grips holds very well and these are coarse threaded they also have this razor sharp point so that when you start to go in it doesn't walk on you and if you've done any woodworking before you know when sometimes when you're trying to drill a screw at an angle it'll kind of walk from the original point so these sharp points allow you just to hold the wood where you want it to be fastened and it'll go right in and here's our square drive oopsie why is that Phillips <laughs> what in the world why are those Phillips head got the wrong screws oh well we'll have to change our bit out but the best screws come with a square drive uh, head and they really work better than the Phillips so I'm gonna have to change the bit out okay well when you have a shop you're most likely gonna find what you need <laughs> and uh, how long are these that's what we need right there okay. these square drives so we'll use them okay you can see the difference I made a mistake when I picked these up at Lowe's I didn't pay attention I've actually never used the Phillips head before so I wasn't even thinking these are the better ones the square drive you can even see they look even a little beefier and the coursing the thread is coarser which will hold better in this the soft wood I'm gonna hold this out just a little bit in case it walks on me see that flush over there and you don't want to drive these home too much you just want to get them down in there I've got the clutch set so I'm not gonna strip out the screw Bits magnetized for some reason. There we go. And you won't believe how unbelievably strong these are. I was worried that since I had to set a new adjustment on my drill bit that it would uh, drill it too deep, but it's fine. They didn't come out the Board had a little bit of a cut to it, so I'm having to work it back and forth as we go down Oops. Okay, the funny thing is I've actually used these to build furniture with. And you can see you can actually make them a feature. If you lay them out with even spacing or proper spacing, they actually will add a feature to your furniture. Now some people might say, well that's cheap. Well, it is cheap, but it works. <laughs> And it's fast and it's strong and a metal you know that that screw is not going to break like a dovetail might and you can spend you know 30 minutes uh, hand cutting a, a dovetail joint and it break on you and you're just going to cry and you got two run pieces of wood uh, the other thing you can do I've done well, if I can find video of this I'll show it these are little plugs that go in there like that I can do it one-handed. You tap them in and then you take a chisel and shave them off. If I can get it going. <laughs> anyway, you get the point. And what I've done before is I've like painted this and stained these so they look like a knot or you can just put like a natural finish on this wood and put a stain or vice versa. Just make it a feature. Some woodworkers are just anal, you know. They want to come into modern times and use quick and effective fastening methods. And uh, I've spent more time videoing this thing <laughs> than I have building it. Mm -hmm. So 
it's, it's a nice way to make a, a quick carcass uh, to, for an inset bookshelf. And what we're going to do after it's painted, we're going to come in here and put the adjustable shelf brackets in there. And, you know, again, if we wanted to spend oodles of time <laughs> on custom work, we would drill holes in the side for little pins to hold the shell. So like this one, uh, this is going to be a custom piece, but this piece here is going to be painted and it's going to be really not even seen by the time they get their equipment and whatever else they want in there. So you got to match your methods to the project. Okay, so we're going to fasten the back of the cabinet on with like a number six wood screw inch and a quarter long and the reason I'm doing that is because I really want to be able to take that back off if I want to. If we drill a hole oh say we drill a hole for a power cable or something like that and it's in the wrong place that's a bad example but I can just take this back off and buy a new piece and replace it. I don't want to glue that um, again if it was furniture that wasn't going to be you know, had had holes drilled in it or whatever and didn't need to be modified, I would just glue it on there, but these screws are going to act just fine. And really, the glue is not going to be that effective. It'd be messy, you know, oozing out and we have to sand it. It'll be, you know, before we paint it and all that. So sometimes it's just neat and clean just to use a, a wood screw and be done with it. What I'm going to do is just pre-drill some holes with a, a bit that's smaller than the shaft of the screw so the thread still uh, hit, you know, catch. But I'm probably going to put one, two, three, four on this side. And I, I'm used to this, but you might want to lay this out so that you're only going in the center of this piece. You may have noticed I'm using a power drill to drill the holes and to drill these holes, but I'm using a cordless drill to run the screws in. That's because obviously the RPMs on this are less. You can also set the clutch and you don't have to worry about stripping the screws out so much. That bit size is really not the right size, so that's why you heard me spinning it a little bit. The reason this bit size is so important, as you can see here, I almost kind of stripped that head out, and that's one thing you don't want to do, because you want to be able to get that screw out. So of course it just it looks ugly too, so <laughs> I'm going to try to find a better size bit for this uh, Phillips bit. You can see now that uh, the screw went in without spinning, without the bit spinning on it, and so the head is not damaged. That one compared to that one. Just a little tip. Okay, so we're going to go around the entire edge, and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so there you go. One fine cabinet carcass. And like I said earlier, we'll have some adjustable brackets. We'll have brackets with the slots in them for an adjustable shelf that'll go in there. I actually forgot the shelf. We'll have to buy another one of these pieces here and cut it to length. What do you think? Looks good. You did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's load this puppy up and get her over to the job. We'll have that, uh, we'll have the installation in our, in our next vlog. What time is it? You got to go to school? Mm, 10.38. Alright, well, we'll have to do that ne the next time we're together. The next time we're together. Uh -huh. <laughs> Until next time. Until next time. <laughs>